Hey guys and welcome, Lord of Pontel here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today it's another one of my Season Hero Guides and we are on to the second of the SX1 Heroes, which is Elk. He is the first of two Archer's Heroes from SX1. Let's have a look at what he's got. So it says he's a ranged hero here and this hero excels at ranged combat suitable for leading middle or back row squads. I do agree with that. Um, Sometimes the developers get it wrong, but in this instance, I, I would say yes. And let's have a look at what skills he's got. So, of course, skill one is the usual dictator skill, 23,100 extra marching capacity for the troops in your hero squad. His first hero-specific skill on skill two is look sharp. It's a prep skill, effective range is two, and it targets one friend, random friendly squad within effective range. It's a uh, pre-battle prep skill, so it will activate, and then for the first three turns, the front row archer squad has between 25% and 70% chance to enter counter-attack state, which deals two, up between 115% and 250% return damage to the source when basic attacked. Uh, so when the opponent's troops attack your front row, you're going to have a 70% chance once you max this in the first three turns, um, to deal 250% return damage to uh, whoever attacked them. It's only kind of got one effect to it, so that's that's not great when we're at this higher level of SX heroes, um, but it is a prep skill. It's a pre-battle prep skill, so it can't be blocked, and 70% is a pretty high chance, so that is, uh, that is pretty good. And also something that is uh, benefiting the front row um, is always good as well, to be honest. So, And the reason it ranges too is because you are likely to have Elk on your middle or back row, so then the rate, it will reach the front row um, at the front of your formation. Skill 3 and 4, of course, defensive formation first on skill 3. It will give between 5% and 50% extra resistance for the troops in your squad. And skill 4 is the offensive formation that will give between 5% and 50% extra might for the troops in your squad. So we'll get nicely onto his fifth skill, which is Volley. It's a combat skill, effective range is five, so that's why you can have him on your back, back row, guys, if you want, because he's got the longest range. Its target is three random enemy squads within effective range, uh, which is nice as well. It's going to impact on all three rows of your opponent's squad, and it will require one turn of prep. The only downside to this skill that I can see is that it's the chance. 35% chance to deal between 118% and 306% damage to three random enemy squads within range. And this second part of the skill is really, really nice. It's going to debuff your opponent's troops by lowering their might, resistance, tactical might, and tactical resistance by between 20% and maxing out at 38% lasting for one turn so it debuffs both the troops and the hero in the squads of your opponent all of them um, this is there are very few skills in the game that debuff all three of the opponent's squads so this is a really really nice skill with this double effect of the of the direct damage and then the debuff um, which of course is going to have an impact on those troops with this debuff. They're going to take more damage from your attacks and they are going to cause less damage to you, to you when they attack. 35% um, chance though, like it's probably going to activate one or two times in a battle and we will look at that in a battle video soon. Um, but really nice. Everything else about this skill is, is really top level stuff. So that's Volley. Skill 6 is the Awakened skill as usual, with the extra 250% bonus to all the leadership skills. And then he's got a slightly lower level of uh, increase on the Might and Resistance. You only get 15% Might and Resistance, and it'll give you 15% extra damage as well on your hero skills. So that's, um, even though, there's, uh, yeah, it's, it's okay, like a lot of SX1 Heroes and beyond, they they give an, a, they give up to twenty percent buff here, um, but um, you know it's nothing. It's certainly not um, a reason to be overly critical. Seventh skill is discipline, so that means that it is the might buff of between thirteen percent and forty percent 
might for all of the three squads, all of the troops in your Heroes Legion. And then we go on to his eighth skill, which is Fixed Bayonets. It's another prep skill, pre-battle prep skill. The effective range is two, and it will target two random friendly squads within effective range. So this will give um, a buff to two of your three squads. And it's effective for the first three turns. And it again, is, it does have chance attached to it. So two random friendly squads have between 25% and 70% chance to be sober, immune, uh, immune to silence, disarm, suppress, and confuse. Uh, so that means that basically your uh, two of your squads uh, are, cannot basically suffer debuffs in the first three turns. And again, I think Elk is one of... Um, only four heroes that have this have this ability in the game. Uh, I think Avalanche, Roku, and might be Scander. I'm not sure. Might be another one that have this ability. Uh, so that's so that's some a rare rare ability to have. And then you have an additional element to the skill as well that it will give 55% increased might. So those troops will do more damage as well. So that's fixed bayonets, guys. Um, let's go straight into a battle video and see Elk in action. So we're up against State 1 in this week's Clash of Province. And being up against State 1 in the Heroes Duel, a lot of their guys have, well, all, all their guys have got to the top four of Heroes Duel. And a lot of them have SX heroes, which is nice for me as I'm doing the SX reviews. Um, so even in just this battle, we've got Elk, Tarantula, Valkyrie, um, Dragon's Avatar, Avalanche, Lawman. Is that Spectral Reaper? Could be. Um, Windwalker and Army Breaker. So lots and lots of SXs here, um, which is helpful. So we'll get into... So this was round three. And you can see uh, that this, this player from S1 has put Elk on his back row. And he's using him with Immortal front row and then Tarantula middle row. Uh, and the player did win the battle. And we have Immortal Guardian with his three skills activating as usual. And then Tyrant in the middle. And then Elk also skills used three. Skill kills only 31,000. So this is, uh, this is something we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, regarding where to put him. Uh, so let's get straight into the video. So as I said, you've got these two prep skills, pre-battle prep skills, which you're going to see activate right now. There you go, look sharp and fix bayonet. So that is the two prep skills that might be active for the first three turns. And did you see there, now one of the, the first... The, the, his second skill is a counter-attack skill for the first three turns. So if you look, when these troops are attacking the front row... Ah, and now we see Volley. So when these when the opponent's troops... There we go. They attack the front, and then you see the minus 3,950. 3, that is the counter-attack element of... of um, elk skill taking effect on the opponent. Uh, now, Living Saint is actually blocking that skill uh, and disarming the troops so that uh, the counter attack is not working on the back row, uh, but it is working on the front rows. And there you go, minus 3,880, and then this middle row, minus 3,906. So that is the that is that counter-attack element in the first three three turns. You'll also see... Right, here's Volley. So that's that, what, 305% damage taking effect. And now these troops are also going to be suffering from the debuff. So this should be on the next turn now, where the archers attack. They should be suffering from those debuffs. So that's 
uh, minus 4,482, minus 5,000 there. Windwalker does have a healing skill, unfortunately. And none of the none of the archers heroes skills took effect on that turn either. So that was a bit of a downer. And this is this is where you might actually want to consider putting elk on your middle row and then pairing him either with um, a spectral reaper or a jade eagle. Because if the volley skill activates and you've got that debuff, then when if if uh, those pure killer archer heroes, if they have their main skills, their ape skills activate, and you've already got that debuff as well in effect, then they're going to do a huge amount of damage to the opponent. Um, you're still seeing, as I said, the this guy with the archers combination is going to win this battle anyway. Having Living Saint on the back row of this combination is not great, to be honest. You'd rather want to have Avalanche on the back. That's that's a better combination with Windwalker and Army Breaker. Um, and there you go. They've already cleared the front row squad um, of the opponent, and now the now the new the middle row has moved forward, and it's taking it's going to be taking the pummeling from uh, all of these hits. Tarantula with a plundering charge. And there you go, that brought victory. So that is kind of, that is where you might want to think about elk actually being on your middle row because, as I say, usually on your back row you're going to have your killer hero and for a killer hero you want them to have more of their com direct combat damage skills activating. Um, Elk skills only really activated three times and um, he only did 30,795 kills. That is, to be honest, for a back row hero, it's not ideal. So that was him in battle. And in terms of combinations so as I've already touched on you can put him on the back row but it might be that you more likely want to have him on the on the middle row um, and one good combination that we know of is for instance that he will work with Sakura Blossom Inquisitor and then himself on the back row that's a nice combination really when you look at his skills and what he's got Again, there's no status skills there, which are guaranteed, uh, you know, guaranteed skills that are lasting the whole battle. You're not going to see him probably activate eight or nine skills in a battle. It's just not possible because the first two skills are only buffing um, their effects on the first three turns of the battle. So you've got to think he's giving you a lot extra at the start. But after that, you're really hoping on this volley skill activating, which only has a 35% chance. Now, if it does activate three or four times in the battle, then you're going to be doing a lot of damage and it's going to have a lot of this debuff working for a considerable amount of the of the battle, which would be really, really nice. Um, but I think, to be honest, you, you, you do just want to have him on a mid-row. And is he top, top level for the Archer's Heroes? I would say no. He's not going to be um, in that absolute endgame um, combination for you. But if you have a very strong, you know, if if you uh, are looking for a second Archer's Legion for your account and, you know, you've already got uh, both Spectral Reaper and maybe Jade Eagle and um, you've picked up uh, a Sakura Blossom that can go on the front and then you've got Immortal Guardian and Tarantula for your, for your other account or you've got Defender, then having Elk on the, potentially on the middle or back row of a second Archer's Legion is absolutely fine and he'll he'll work really well for you. If you do put him on the back row, then of course you'll want to unlock the ape skill first. Um, it, it's giving a really good buff to two of your legions at the start of the battle. And generally in, you know, what you do want from a middle row hero is that they 
they are giving they are giving a bit of additional combat boost to you with that direct combat battle skill which he has in his fifth skill and then you want them to also have these elements where they're either debuffing your opponent or buffing your troops and he's got that too so um you might even be tempted to just unlock his ape skill even if you were putting him in on the middle row as well just so that you do have all of those kind of elements working well and he can be helping to protect that front row which means that the fact that you've got less troops on the middle row is not such of an issue because you hopefully um, your middle row won't um, disband and you won't need to have your middle row at the front of your formation at any point in the battle. So that is everything on Elk, guys. Uh, as usual, I hope you found this um, found this guide useful and it's given you a better idea of what how you want to use Elk if you get him in recruitment. Um, of course, it is likely that you will pick up some SX-1 heroes either through seasonal rewards in Eden where we get the SX-1 and 2 recruitment cards which do have SX-1 heroes on them, three on each. And with, now with this new SX-4 recruitment where you you have an increased chance of obtaining an SX-4 hero but equally you can end up with anything from an SX-1, SX-2 or SX-3 uh, once you hit the 1000 luck. So it is likely that you know, you're going to pick up SX-1 heroes while you're playing the game guys because of the way that the game has separated the rewards and also the the higher level recruitment for these advanced end game heroes so thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed the video please do if you haven't already click on that subscribe and ring the bell and if you have people in your alliance that have elk or you might have them yourself and you think that i might be doing him a disservice then please do you know pop comments in the section below i'll be interested to hear your experiences of using elk from yourselves if you have him and um, if you could share my channel in your alliance chats province chats guilds chats if you're in eden and also through line whatsapp discord or vibrate if you use those um, apps to communicate with your teams in the game that would be really appreciated guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon